What do we get if we add up a bunch of perfect squares? Say the first k perfect squares. What I'm asking for is a formula for this sum. The sum of n squared as n goes from 1 to k, right? So 1 squared plus 2 squared plus 3 squared plus dot, 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 right? And so on until I get to k squared. What do I get if I add up the first k perfect squares? Quite shockingly, the resulting formula ends up looking really nice. This ends up being equal to k times k plus 1 times 2k plus 1 all over 6. Really? Well, we can try it for some specific value. Right? What if I do the sum and goes from 1 to 4 of n squared? That's 1 squared plus 2 squared plus 3 squared plus 4 squared. That's 1 plus 4 plus 9 plus 16. 4 and 16 make 20. 1 and 9 make 10. 20 plus 10 is 30. So the sum of the first four perfect squares is 30. Is that really what this formula is giving? Well, let's check it out. So I'm going to put in 4 for k. 4 times 4 plus 1 times 2 times 4 plus 1 all over 6. What's that? Well, that's 4 times 5 times 2 times 4 plus 1 is 9 divided by 6. 6 is 2 times 3, so the 2 kills part of the 4 and part of the 9 to give me 2 times 5 times 3. And yeah, I mean, 5 times 3 is 15, twice 15 is 30. It really works, at least for the value 4. Of course, this isn't a proof in general. So how am I going to verify that that statement is true? Well, one argument is a geometric argument, really a proof by picture. So here's a geometric or a diagrammatic way of writing down 1 squared plus 2 squared plus 3 squared plus 4 squared. Now I know there's 30 dots here, right? But I'm trying to draw a diagram that suggests a general pattern. Okay, so let's try to add up these, uh, these four numbers. I'm going to use this device here. What is this? Well, what I've done here is I've taken uh, three copies of these uh, k squares, right? So here's 1 squared plus 2 squared plus 3 squared plus 4 squared. Here's another 1 squared plus 2 squared plus 3 squared plus 4 squared. And in the middle, I've sort of mixed it up a bit. I've taken the lower left-hand corner dot, which is red, and I've lined them up vertically here. I've taken the next sort of three long L shape, which I've drawn in blue here, and I've straightened them out and placed those three here. I've taken the two uh, five long orange L's and straightened them out here. And then here at the top, I've got one long brown L comprised of seven dots. And I've straightened that out right here at the top. So what's happened here, right? I've taken three copies of my sums of squares, right? So I've got three copies of all these squares. One set is down here, one set's down here, and the other set is mixed in the middle. And now I can figure out how big of a rectangle this is. Well, the bottom here, this is a k by k square, k by k square, and these are built out of the corners. They're just one uh, dot. So this whole bottom side is made up of 2k plus 1 dots, k plus 1 plus k, or 2k plus 1. What about along the other side? Well, along the other side, I've got one dot plus two dots plus three dots plus four dots. And of course, this is just a, a specific picture. So in general, it'd be one plus two plus three plus four plus that until I get to k. All right? So I have to figure out how tall this rectangle is. But I, in fact, know a formula for one plus two plus three plus four up through k. Right? We figured that out already. It's k times k plus one over two. So I've taken three copies and built them into a rectangle whose base is 2k plus 1 and which is k times k plus 1 over 2 tall. So that means that this sum, which is what I'm trying to compute, must be, well, it's the, the height of this rectangle times the width of this rectangle divided by 3, since I used three copies of, uh, 
of these squares to build the big rectangle, so I end up dividing by 3. And this is in fact the formula that we had, right? The original formula was k times k plus 1 times 2k plus 1 all over 6. But that's just a rearranged version of this formula. There are other geometric arguments as well, other proofs by picture that you could give. And there are other geometric arguments too. Here's another way to get at this sum of squares formula. I could uh, write down my sum of squares as something built out of little tiny cubelets, right? Here I've got one cube. Underneath I've got two squared cubes, right? But this is a two by two by one uh, block. Underneath I've got nine little cubes, right? It's a three by three by one uh, block. And underneath that I've got 16 cubes, a four by four by one block, right? And I can imagine this thing is k high. I take six copies of this pyramid, you know, fit them together, flip one over and so forth, until I end up with a k by k plus one by two k plus one box, right? And that box must be comprised of k times k plus one times two k plus one little tiny cubes. And since I used six copies of this thing, well, that means the number of cubes in this thing, which is the sum of 1 squared plus 2 squared plus until I get to k squared, right? That sum must be k times k plus 1 times 2k plus 1 divided by 6. Now here, we've given geometric arguments for this particular sum, but in the future we're also going to see some algebraic arguments, right? But we're going to wait on those a little bit. For the time being, this particular equality will be very helpful when we start doing some calculations of uh, Riemann sums.